Hello guys, welcome to the Wars and Weapons channel. In my video about tanks, I said that tanks were basically just a way so they can move field artillery during rough terrains and uh, protect the crew that are moving the artillery uh, from machine gun fire and rifle fire from enemy infantry and they can also fire on the move using the fact that the guns on the tank don't like rotate in the direction that the tank is moving so they can fire independently from the tank. So that's basically the idea of land ships during World War I. Now in this video we're going to talk about artillery during World War I and some of the uh, things that caused artillery to become so popular before World War I. Now as we all know, or you may not know, artillery, uh, the use of artillery in Europe escalated after Napoleonic Wars. This is the fact Napoleon himself was an artillery officer within France and he saw that how powerful artillery is so he decided if I can arm the French army with a ton of artillery, they can definitely win a lot of battles. This is the fact the fights at the time usually used line infantry. And that like they would use line infantry against line infantry. Now, the muskets they used at the time was not extremely accurate. So they would have to fire in line so they can put four or five shells at the enemy at the same time. So they can hope that one of them strikes an enemy which would cause a huge lines of infantry uh, staying behind each other. So artillery in this area, as I said, it's stronger than musket fire, so it can penetrate uh, and kill multiple soldiers if it manages to hit one of those lines. So Napoleon saw that and he saw if we can position artillery behind our infantry in a way like on elevated uh, areas that they can't uh, fire at friendly soldiers, it can be a huge help. This is a fact that the infantry would be like four in a line or five in a line, sometimes less, sometimes more based on what, uh, like based on the uh, uniqueness of the battle. Like if the battle is an extremely long battle, they would uh, stretch thinner. And if it's like a battle in a small area, they would stretch thicker to provide more fire and be able to fit more infantry within the area. So basically the artillery could, uh, if it managed to hit a line, it could kill at least four to five soldiers. And if it managed to hit it diagonally, it could kill even more. The fact that it could go through more lines and like more of the horizontal lines and more of the vertical lines and kill a ton more soldiers. So after the other, uh, other nations in Europe saw how successful Napoleon's technique was, they started bringing artillery of their own into the battlefield, which led to the escalation of artillery usage. Now during World War I, artillery saw a ton of improvements. The main one being the fact that it was split into two groups, field artillery and uh, heavy artillery. The he field artillery is also known as light artillery, but we all know it more, more commonly as field artillery. Heavy artillery from its name, it's obvious it's heavy and cannot go into battle and you have to provide logistical infrastructure and machines in order to be able to pro uh, move it from one location to another. So they would be more successful as siege weapons when field artillery were light and could go into battle and face the enemy directly, so they would be uh, deployed more on the battlefield and no man's land itself, and sometimes even in trenches. Now, the artillery was one of the main reasons that trench warfare was used within World War I. This is the fact the soldiers saw that rushing into artillery fire while under machine gun fire would uh, take a lot of casualties. So they had to think of a way so they can uh, provide themselves cover before they assault and uh, kill the enemy soldiers, which led to the creation of trench warfare. They would just basically create trenches on both sides of the battlefield with an area known as no man's land, uh, being the area where both uh, sides can fire on, like with machine guns, even artillery. And heavy artillery fire was one of the most feared things during World War I because it could easily uh, perish tons of soldiers within the no man's land and it would also the explosions themselves would cause mud after rain making it extremely hard for soldiers to move within the no man's land because their boots would continue to get stuck in mud and they would have to take their time to remove it so and then the artillery itself also saw many improvements the field artillery part uh, mostly the field artillery actually adapted the long barrel recoil mechanism produced by the french it's basically uh, the fact that they uh, put like the metal sheet uh, that's supposed to protect you and the uh, uh, wheels into a different structure and then they put the gun in a different structure itself and they would just assemble the two 
so it can uh, like it can be a different structure in, entirely so like during napoleonic war once you fired artillery due to the fact it was a single uh, structure it would move the entire artillery back so um, you would have to reposition artillery and the repositioning couldn't always be right and your calculations would lead to tons of misfires but with the long barrel recoil mechanism the barrel would just be pushed back by the recoil and the uh, structure that was the artillery was on would not move and instead it would put the barrel back into position so you can continuously fire uh, at an increased rate during the, that, than the Napoleonic War and you can also fire more accurately due to the fact the repositioning is always going to be correct. Now one of the other improvements that heavy artillery saw was the use of different kinds of ammunition. Now as we all know heavy artillery is not something you would want to put up against armored targets because it's not maneuverable and it can easily be destroyed. So they would use high explosive shell which basically makes of multiple chemicals that could uh, explode into a violent cloud of fire when, uh, when, it, like, when it hit the ground. The other kind of ammunition you could use were basically chemical weapons which you would just basically put chemicals in the artillery shell so that once it strikes the ground it opens up and tons of uh, poisonous gases come out. This technique was mostly used by the German and is one of the most inhumane tactics ever used during the entire uh, during all wars in history and after that they actually decided to ban chemical weapons after World War I because as I said it's extremely inhuman. Now the chlorine gas itself was extremely deadly and it was extremely heavy so it would sink into trenches and basically once it found a way into your lungs it would start violently uh, expanding and producing a ton of water so basically drowning you on dry ground. That's how deadly and inhumane the chlorine gas was. Now this technique was banned so the high explosive ammunition were the only ammunition that artillery were allowed to use after World War I. Now field artillery itself uh, led as I said to the creation of tanks and trench warfare but itself as I said uh, saw tons of improvements such as some of them becoming lighter to be able to move through uh, different regions with the fact during rural, rural area fightings it would be extremely hard to maneuver your artillery after like some buildings were destroyed and the ones that actually managed to stand after artillery fire and tons of fighting would be extremely durable so you can't just basically just move your artillery through the destroyed building it'd be extremely hard so tanks basically found a way to move them and lighter artillery could maneuver without having a problem to the fact they're lighter and the infantry can uh, lift them up slightly and they can put it over any obstacle in their way and during roller areas it was hard to maneuver artillery but in urban areas it was almost impossible to be able to move artillery so you had to use tanks and as i said one of the biggest problems with tanks was that it could not fire during what's directly in front of them which led to field artillery that were actually positioned in urban areas extremely dangerous due to the fact the only thing protecting a tank from being uh, shelled from the front was a machine gun. Now most of the World War I artillery actually had a metal sheet covering them from a machine gun fire so they could fire basically at anywhere when under any circumstance. So the tanks at the time were also pretty tight and they would fit the engine ammunition and the crew in basically the same space which would basically mean that if any a single artillery shell would manage to penetrate it could basically render the tank useless and just basically another obstacle within the no man's land or the urban area. Mortars actually were used during World War I as well due to the fact the Germans saw that the artillery has a slight problem. It cannot fire uh, like what is uh, extremely close and is uh, on a lower elevation due to the fact it only fires at things that are on uh, like the horizon. So the Germans saw this and they decided mortars are a good idea because mortars could be deployed by the crew and they could fire up at a vertical uh, angle so it would like this is the area the trench is in and this is the mortar it could easily fire up a shell and then it would fall into the trench killing thousands of soldiers uh, during world war one and one of the most one of the biggest advantages mortars had to, to heavy artillery was that heavy artillery usually required recon planes or recon soldiers to position their fire and direct where they want to hit and it was extremely hard because the crew mm, and the crew that worked with heavy artillery could not see where they're firing at. So it would be extremely hard to target 
uh, enemy uh, like targets that were important. Mortars did not have such disadvantage. The uh, crew that was uh, rushing the enemy trenches could set them up everywhere and they could easily see where they're firing at so they can direct their fire more accurately, which makes the mortars more deadly. Now, after that, the mortars saw uh, an increased service rate. In fact, the rest of the countries, mainly the British and the French, seeing that like the Germans used the mortar and they managed to kill tons of our soldiers, so why shouldn't we use the mortar? Which then the use of mortars escalated a lot and it's still being used today. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the war bell to be notified of the rest of the wars that will occur on the channel later. Thank you for watching again, and stand by for the next video.